I'm Sage. And I'm Natalie. We are your student leaders for Kenya Club this year. Kenya Club is the charity of the month. To raise money, we are selling donuts every Tuesday morning for $1. At middle school and high school lunches, we are selling a jeans pass for $5. On September 19th, we are having a spike ball tournament to help raise money as well. It is $10 per team, and make sure you bring water. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Big Brother, where we lock a group of people in a house and let them compete for $50,000. Do you think you're ready for the challenge? We have a group of contestants auditioning for our show today. Please give us your name and one thing about you that defines your personality and makes you think that you would be right for our show. Uh, you're muted. Hi, I am Tessa and I am the champion of 8-Ball in my Game Pigeon League and I am very competitive. In my last game, I hit the eight ball in on my very first turn. Oh, <laughs> well, isn't that something special? Next up, uh, the girl reading, it's your turn. Hello, my name is Emma. I am super well read. What I've learned from all those books I read could really help me on the show. Reading, that's... Interesting, I guess. Is there anything else? No. I'm just a really good reader. Oh. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next person. Hopefully they have something, uh, more TV-worthy. Hello. My name is Kaylin, and I am the best Just Dance player ever. My high score is 150 points. <laughs> Alright. Next. I am who I am. And? I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. And I am the way, the truth. Okay, next person. No, wait. I think he's on to something here. Let's look at the Gospel of John. John 6.35 says, I am the bread of life. And John 8.12 says, I am the light of the world. There's more. John 11.25 says, I am the resurrection and the life. And John 10.14 says, I am the good shepherd. Wow, maybe I should be reading my Bible more. This Jesus guy seems pretty important. I think that concludes our auditions for today. What about us? All those books I read definitely did not prepare me for this disappointment. Yeah, weren't you impressed by my game pigeon skills? My dancing is superior to being bred. I don't even like bread. You should totally pick me. I am the right choice. Not bread guy. Me. This is so well, unfair. Definitely making you the okay, commercial. Every week this year, we will be focusing on a different name of God found in the Bible. Today, we will be focusing on Yahweh, which means I am. Yahweh is found nearly 7,000 times in the Bible, including our theme verse, Isaiah 43:11 which says, I, I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no other. This name begins, however, in Exodus, in Exodus 3.14. God said to Moses, I am who I am, and he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Today's Bible reading comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 7-14. through 14. God reveals himself to Moses through a messenger, Jesus, in the burning bush. God tells Moses to use the name Yahweh, which means I am to identify the God who would rescue them from the Egyptians. The name served as a reminder to the Israelites that God saved them from the slavery, did not forsake them in the wilderness, and was always present in the Israelites' trials and joy. Now when we hear the name Yahweh, we can be reminded that God also has brought us out of slavery to sin. We can have peace in the knowledge that God does not forsake us, and that He is with us in our own trials and joy. Hear now God's word from Exodus. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. 
Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you.
Hey, welcome to chapel. Um, I'm not wearing my mask today because my wife is still with me in Mrs. Crowder's room. And so just so you know, even though I'm on campus, no mask is needed. Um, please, let's open in prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Uh, dear Holy Father, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of our hearts bring glory to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I am a child of the 70s. I was born in 1970, so my whole entire childhood was spent in that kind of funky decade. The really cool thing about that decade is that parents didn't really watch their kids like they do today. You kind of had freedom to ride your bike all over the place. And so what would happen is, is my mom would basically let me go out and I wouldn't have to return till dinner time. There were no cell phone or texts or any way for her, her to monitor where I was, so I just came back when it started to turn dark. Well, probably the weirdest thing about that time was because they had no idea where we are, I had like a fifth and sixth grade gang. Now, it wasn't like a gang like today. There was no weapons or anything like that. But basically, our fifth grade, about 25 or 30 of us, would go fight, like fist fight, uh, another school. So we would meet and we'd kind of pair up, like the biggest, toughest guys would fight each other and then so on. Well, I had two little brothers that were just brutal with me, and so I learned how to fight pretty well, and I was pretty well developed for a fifth grade kid, so I was pretty much near the top. Now, a lot of times I had to fight the other school's toughest people. But the best thing happened when my friend Joey would come, because Joey was one of those kids who played running back. He was really athletic, but he was bigger than all the linemen. He was just really, really tough. So when Joey is there, I always had this great confidence. Number one, I didn't have to fight the biggest kid. And number two, just having him there would just enable me, it would embolden me, it would give me a little bit more courage. I'm going to come back to that story later on in the sermon where it actually makes some sense. What we're talking about today is really God's names. This year in chapel, we are talking about the name of God and that he is our savior. So let's start with Moses, where God actually gives him the name Yahweh, or I am, um, as his name to be used forever. Please read along with me. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you, he's talking to Moses, to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Note how unconfident that Moses was. And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that I, it is I who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites, this is his own people, and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? And God says to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you should call me from generation to generation. If you see at the bottom of the slide, I have it written in Greek, what I am who I am is. And then that's translated kind of in the Yahweh, um, in the Hebrew. And in your Bibles, it's in all caps, it's called Lord. So whenever Yahweh comes up in the Bible, it's all caps Lord um, inside there. You see from this testament that God gave him. It's the first time God gave anybody his name. And then Moses later goes back and writes the first chapters of the Bible. So he wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He wrote those five. Those things happen when God hadn't even named himself to his people. The great I am, that idea that I am, basically means that I am present with you. God is telling his people that he has always been there with them. He is with them now, and he's always present with them, and he'll always be with them in the future. In the Old Testament, the great I Am helped Noah and made a covenant with him. He led Abraham and promised the promised land of Israel. He led Moses and the Hebrews to the desert into the promised land. And he used Isaiah and Daniel to prophesy his name about Jesus being their savior. 
The theme for this verse for this year is I, I am the Lord, which is Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior, from Isaiah 43, 11. Then when it comes to the New Testament, it becomes really clear that Jesus is Yahweh. In fact, Jesus himself claims himself to be Yahweh. The writers of the Gospels claim that he is Yahweh. One of the first times we see this is in Matthew 14, when Jesus comes out to them on the water. It reads, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. Now in English, it says, it is I. So our English translation kind of ruins this a little bit. It says, it is I, don't be afraid. But in reality, it is I is really, I am Yahweh. Um, it, it is I is a kind of mistranslation from uh, Greek to English. He basically says, I am. We see this again when Jesus visits the woman at the well. This is one of the greatest stories of all time. Jesus goes directly through Samaria, a place where the Jews hate. He takes his disciples to Samaria, and he meets a Samaritan woman at the well. And the Samaritan woman is disgraced. She is shamed. She is hurting. She's been removed from norm, the norms of society. And Jesus there heals her. He comes to her. He redeems her. He takes away his shame. And actually, she becomes one of the first evangelists for Jesus. She runs back in the town around all the people and claims Jesus as our Savior. Listen to what he says there. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. And he is basically saying, I am Yahweh, the Savior. One of the coolest stories, and this kind of refers back to my 70s fighting, is in John 18, when they come to arrest Jesus. It's one of the most powerful things, and I often skip over it. I actually even forgot it was there. So Judas came to the garden guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches and lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it that you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth. They replied, and Jesus says, I am he. Once again, a mistranslation. He actually says, I am Yahweh. And at those words, everybody fell back and fell to the ground from the power of him using that word. He basically said, I am God. And to them, that was powerful. They all fell over. And the cool thing about the story is what happened next is Peter drew his sword and chopped off the ear of Malthus. And then Jesus healed his ear and told Peter to stop, that his arrest was part of God's master plan. You see, Peter was emboldened by the presence of Jesus. That happened after Jesus saying one word knocked everybody over. It was like having Joey next to me going into a fight. It emboldened me. It gave me a little bit more courage. And I think Jesus in our lives should do the same thing. Truly, Jesus is Yahweh. He has been with us from the very beginning of time. And then he was born incarnate as our Savior. And he died on the cross for us. So when you feel ill-equipped for a task God is calling you to, take heart. He'll be with you like he walked with Moses through through that whole entire time in the Hebrew history. When you're overwhelmed with the storms of life, know that Jesus is going to reach down uh, to you and grasp you and pull you out of that storm. He's always there for you. And when you're carrying your guilt and your shame for the things you have done wrong, understand that just like the woman at the well, Jesus will redeem you and he loves you and he'll give you strength to fight through that. He'll give you freedom from your sins. And then when you need confidence and strength to overcome difficulties and enemies, know that Jesus, that one word can knock down everything, and if one word can control the waves and the weather, and if one word can really power everything on earth, is there with you to help you overcome that. 
But most importantly, understand that Jesus' death and his resurrection, we have no fear. Cause us to have no fear of sin, death, or the devil. We're not afraid of dying, because we know that when we die, we'll spend forever and eternity with Jesus in heaven. Jesus is our conquering Savior. We have no reason to fear anything. Thank you for listening, and amen. As you can see, not everyone has what it takes to be I am. God, Yahweh, declares his own righteousness and power that there is no other way to salvation besides him. God says he is the Lord and is our salvation. Amen.